So today we're making the famous Southern Italian coastal classic, Pesce all'acqua pazza, which translates to fish in crazy water. And let me tell you something, it's not that crazy, but I'm gonna make it crazier. So let's just jump right in. Now traditionally, aqua pazza was a whole fish poached in seawater. So it's the salty seawater combined with wine. That's how you get the name crazy water. It's just a salty broth. And now, since most people don't live by the ocean, to make this, you can just use a water that's salted. But we're gonna add a few things to jazz it up. And instead of using a whole fish, we're gonna use a beautiful piece of halibut. Now, like I said, this is usually served with a whole fish or at the very least with the skin on. And the skin is on this. The skin actually has a little collagen in it and it sort of releases into the broth and it sort of thickens it a bit, which is nice. The doctor said I got high cholesterols again. So she wants me to eat this stuff without the skin. So what I'm gonna do is remove it, which I don't really love poached fish skin anyway. Now to do this, just like we do with making chicken cutlets, bring the board to the edge and get down to board level and using a thin fillet knife, work the knife between the skin and the fillet and with the knife at the smallest downward angle just slowly wiggle the knife allow the edge and the angle to do the work until the knife wiggles out the other side and because the knife was angled down you get a perfectly clean piece of skin without butchering the flesh of the fish and now you can keep that fillet whole, but I actually like to split it in two. I find it's a little easier to eat at the end that way. Now, if you didn't want to waste that, you can totally add this to the broth and allow it to release some of that collagen, some of that fat, and you get the same effect. But I'm gonna make my doctor happy today and just not use it. So now that I'm about 30 minutes away from cooking it, what I'm just gonna do is season them on all sides. And so now these are just gonna go hang out in the refrigerator. That salt's gonna penetrate them. We're not really worried about a crust, so drying them out isn't that important, but it will likely happen. So while these rest in the fridge, we can work on the other stuff. First up, the basics, onion, garlic, some cherry tomatoes. So I just need about a half an onion as this is for one portion. Remove the top and the root end and with the lines of the onion running perpendicular to the knife, slice around the curvature of the onion. Once you get past halfway, stop, push away the slices and push the small end of the onion forward so that you have a new stable surface to continue slicing. Then cut a couple garlic cloves in half and then slice them thinly. And the amount of garlic is up to you, but I like a lot in this dish. Then we've got about a half a pound of cherry tomatoes that I got from the farmer's market. And these are so sweet and flavorful. I'm just gonna cut them into quarters. Then we need a little fresh Italian parsley chopped as fine as you can. So we've got our basics. Onion, cherry tomatoes, garlic, parsley. I'm gonna have some basil, a little wine, about a cup of water, salt. And then to make it a little crazier, usually people add a little chili flake, it's not enough. I'm gonna take some cherry peppers and I'm gonna do a little trick I do with my cavatelli sausage and broccoli. Essentially what I'm going to do is make a cherry pepper sauce, an emulsification of pureed cherry peppers plus the liquid that they're packed in, which will give a nice heat, but it'll also give a nice acidity to the dish. And then it's just gonna add a lot of oomph to the dish. And that mixed with the garlic and the fish, just, mm, it's beautiful. So into this container, maybe you got like a little bullet blender or something. That would work great. I'm gonna take a few large spoonfuls and I get enough of them in there to be able to blend it. If you have leftovers, perfect in pastas and all sorts of stuff. You probably end up having to use about half the jar of the peppers and then I'm going to add cherry pepper liquid directly into it, just enough to get it pureed. So there's no science to it. I'm just gonna take a little bit at a time, see if the blender's gonna fit in there and puree it all and we'll make adjustments later. Now, if the peppers aren't pureeing into a smooth, thick sauce, then you need a touch more liquid to help it get going. And if it's too thin, you added too much liquid. But I'll tell you, this is the crazy juice right here, and it's the thing that takes this dish over the top. Woo! And I'm just gonna get it into a little squeeze bottle so it's nice and easy to store in the fridge. Here's the super crazy juice. And then because I like it crazy, we're just gonna make sure we throw a few more cherry peppers in there just for good measure. Now, aquapazza is a dish typical of the coastline around Naples. And I'm actually gonna be in that area in a month for a wedding. And now I can say things like, Ciao, signorina, mi piacere, come stai, bene tu? Because I've been brushing up on my Italian thanks to our sponsor today, Rosetta Stone. Now, in college, I took Italian with a teacher, but we also had a workshop where we used Rosetta Stone to learn Italian. And I learned nothing from the teacher and 
everything from Rosetta Stone. So I've been a huge fan of them for a very long time. And Rosetta Stone doesn't rely on teaching you translation. Instead, it uses your natural language abilities to teach you a new language in an immersive, intuitive, and visual way. And being a visual learner, I appreciate that. And I've actually stopped using other services because they don't have visual. And this helps you prepare for real life conversations that you're going to encounter when you travel. And one of the best parts of Rosetta Stone is their voice recognition tool. Vorrei fare una prenotazione. Which helps ensure that each word and phrase you learn, you're pronouncing perfectly. Arriviamo alle sette. The lessons are as short as 10 minutes, so it fits your schedule, and with the mobile app, you can easily learn a new language anywhere you are. And with a lifetime subscription, you get access to all languages. When you purchase now, you'll never have to pay a renewal fee ever again, and it allows you to learn at your own pace. You can't learn a new language overnight, so you need to give yourself some time. And right now, Rosetta Stone is offering 15% off the lifetime subscription. Originally $299, now you can get it for $150. So go visit my link down in the description, Sign up for Rosetta Stone, you can learn any language you want for life. Now let's get back into the recipe. So here's all the crazy stuff for the crazy water. And then you're gonna wanna make sure you get some good bread to sop up all that broth. And I like a nice ciabatta bread. A little crust on the outside, soft and airy in the inside, soaks up all that bread. Mm. Once we get everything situated in the pan and poaching, we're gonna toast this guy, warm it up real nice. Now, since I'm making a small batch, I'm gonna use my 10 inch frying pan with a lid. Get it on medium high heat and add enough oil to coat the bottom of the pan. And then we can add in the onions once it's hot. Hit them with a small amount of salt and begin sauteing. One other ingredient I forgot to mention that I like to use in this recipe is tomato paste. So I'm gonna get that out and ready to go. And after a couple minutes sauteing and the onions are turning translucent, then we can add in the sliced garlic. Hit them with a touch of salt, lightly seasoning each ingredient as we add them. Then when the onions are starting to slightly brown and the garlic is soft and fragrant, we can add the cherry tomatoes. Whoa, look alive, we're cooking here, pay attention. Again, lightly season the tomatoes and then cook the tomatoes until they cook down and soften. You can even use the spoon to squish them. Now we can add in our cherry peppers. Get that worked in and now we can add a tablespoon of that tomato paste and stir it all together to get that tomato paste coating the vegetables and cook that down for about a minute or two. This is gonna be the base for our crazy water. Once that's cooked down, we can kill the heat before we add in a cup or two of white wine. Then carefully turn the heat back on, reduce the wine down by a little more than half. Then we're gonna add in a cup of the water. And finally, to jazz this crazy water up, we're gonna add this crazy cherry pepper juice. I'll go in with a nice squirt to start, and then I'll season the broth with salt and then taste it. I wanna make sure that broth is flavorful and zippy enough for me. I think it could use a little more cherry pepper, so I'll add that. Then I wanna allow my broth to reduce slightly before adding the fish. According to the legendary Italian cookbook author, Marcella Hezan, the crazy water should be thicker than a broth, but not as thick as a sauce. And that is up to you to determine. That's when you need to stop reading a recipe and just be a cook and use your sense and judgment to decide for yourself. If you make a mistake, you don't reduce the water enough, you don't add enough salt, the water is bland, you can always learn and never make that mistake again. Once that sauce is at a nice consistency, we can nestle the fish into the crazy water, cover with some of the vegetables, lower the heat down, and then place a lid on it. Set a timer for five minutes. The way we cut that fish will make it a quick cook. And while it cooks, we can heat up the ciabatta roll and pick some basil from my garden. Then after around four minutes, I'm gonna go and check them. And I can feel that they're already done. So I'm gonna kill the heat, finish with some fresh parsley, and then we're ready to plate. And now this is gonna be best served in a shallow bowl. And the tricky thing about this is sort of fishing out these delicate pieces of fish onto the bowl. And if the fish falls, falls apart, it falls apart. It's not a big deal. We can just use that as a base to rest the piece that we can transfer successfully to the plate. And we are going to make this pretty, but this is more of a rustic dish, so don't really worry about it. And the reason I like to cut them and cook them this way is not only is it a fast cook, but, but these thin strips of fillets sort of allows you to use a fork and a piece of bread to just get a nice fork full easily onto your utensil. And it's just a little easier to eat in my opinion. Then we'll get all those goodies in the crazy water, pour it right on top with just enough crazy water to sort of pool at the bottom of the bowl. Then we'll pick some nice young fresh basil leaves right on top, a little more fresh parsley, and then we break bread and dig in. Then you use that bread almost like a little fork to push it all on there. Then you take a hit of the bread. Mmm. It's a simple broth, but it's spicy and flavorful. You could of course leave out the spicy crazy, but I think that's the thing that makes this crazy like its name. It's a great recipe. You're gonna love it. Recipe's gonna be down in the description. 
But before we go, make sure you check out this video I posted last week because it is probably my favorite video I've ever made and it's probably my best work. So I'd love it if you went and go give it a watch after this. Link will be in the title card. That's all that I got today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.